Kaniwa, Kaniwa, and Kaniwa once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm back with whole grain of the day, the one and only Kaniwa, right? <laughs> so maybe you've seen it, but you didn't quite know the name of it. Maybe you've never seen it, but maybe you've heard of the name. Maybe you've never seen it, never heard of the name before doesn't matter whatever the case may be please listen on why because we're about to dive into the wonderful world of Kaniwa all right first up a little bit of background information Kaniwa is a grain like seed native to the Peruvian Andes now if you don't know where Peru is located I just want to let you in on a quick uh, little tidbit Peru is a small country located on the western coast of South America. Please check it out. Kaniwa is the latest super grain whose cousin is quinoa. Now, please do not get Kaniwa confused with quinoa. Now, yes, they, the names may sound the same, but they are two completely different whole grains. So let's go ahead and find out a little more information. All right, fun facts. Kaniwa is easy to digest and naturally contains no gluten, right? So for all of us who have any type of gluten allergies or maybe you have a gluten intolerance, good news, Kaniwa contains zero gluten. Also, try Kaniwa in place of oatmeal for breakfast or as a rice replacement at lunch or dinner. So there you have it, guys. If you're fed up with eating rice and oatmeal all the time, it's always good to switch it up. So say hello to Kaniwa. Now, for those of us who are interested in cooking, right? Here's a little more information for you. To cook, mix one part Kaniwa with two parts water and simmer over low heat for 15 to 20 minutes. So there you have it, guys. Kaniwa is an easy grain to cook. And guess what? It doesn't require a lot of time. Also, you can make <clears throat> Kaniwa flour by grinding the seeds, right? So as you can see, Kaniwa can be eaten in its natural form, or if you have the time and the effort, go ahead, grind the seeds and make your own flour. All right, it's time for the 520 rule. Now notice that I present this information before diving into the health benefits and the nutrition facts. Guys, the 520 rule is all about food labels. That's right, food labels. Basically, it's a guide to let us know whether or not a food item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. In other words, it helps you to understand and read food labels. Now, the most interesting thing about the 520 rule is that it really only pertains to the percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, take a look at the diagram. Notice that percent daily value is highlighted in what we can say is a lavender color, right? So when it comes to the 520 rule, it's all about the percent DV. So if the food item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% of any particular nutrient, then the food item is not a good source of that particular nutrient. If it offers 10% to 19%, then it is a good source of that particular nutrient. Now, if it offers 20% or greater, then it is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. Now, here's something that you need to be aware of. There are certain ingredients in certain foods that you may want less of, whereas there are other nutrients that you want more of. So take a look at the picture. Notice that total fat, cholesterol, and sodium are all highlighted in yellow. Those are the three nutrients that you really don't want to put a lot of in your body. Why? Because they contribute to the big four, right? Cancer, heart disease, obesity, and let's not forget about type 2 diabetes. Lastly, notice that dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron are all highlighted in blue. Well, it's just the opposite. 
those are the nutrients that you do want to get more of right so there you have it guys that's the 520 rule in a nutshell okay so now that we are aware <laughs> of the 520 rule <laughs> let's see how it applies to our whole grain of the day kaniwa so a serving size of kaniwa is going to be 50 grams or we can simply say one fourth cup now the calories only 178 total fat 2.1 grams which is equivalent to three percent right so what that simply means is that a single serving of kaniwa is not a good source of fat so for those of us who are trying to lose a little bit of weight guess what it's an excellent choice also saturated fat comes in at only one percent good sodium zero percent total carbs we're going to get about 32 grams which is equivalent to about 10.6 percent right so if perhaps you're looking for a low carb food item then at 10.6 percent it is a good source of carbs but it's on the lower range right next up is dietary fiber coming in at 4.9 grams which is equivalent to 19.6 percent so believe it or not a single serving of kaniwa is a very good source of dietary fiber also protein 7.5 grams now vitamin a 0.1 percent definitely not a good source of vitamin a vitamin c zero percent not a good source <laughs> of vitamin c but now calcium is a little higher at 2.3 percent but still not necessarily not necessarily a good source and lastly we have iron coming in at a nice 12.7 percent so it is a good source of iron right so ladies and gentlemen if you are let's say anemic your body lacks iron then guess what start eating more kaniwa okay now it's time for the health benefits but before we dive into the health benefits let's first talk about some well one particular principle of the natural universe now some people may term this uh the seven hermetic principles the one in particular that applies to our lecture today is the principle of cause and effect now this principle simply states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause there is no such thing as luck and or chance in other words everything happens for a reason now if you are stricken with the big four obesity type 2 diabetes heart disease and cancer chances are your diet caused it now what that simply translates to is that the disease is the effect the cause is your diet so in order to become healthy we got to be able to use the, the principle of cause and effect to our advantage what does that simply mean is that the more nutrients you put into your body the healthier you will become so that's why it's important to reduce your consumption of animal products and processed foods why because they deliver toxins to the body which then cause disease if you want to be healthy you got to put the good stuff in therefore the good stuff comes out so now that we understand the principle of cause and effect let's see how it applies to kaniwa hence health benefits right so number one kaniwa is a nutrient powerhouse meaning it is rich in protein fiber iron calcium and antioxidants next up it is a complete source of protein which basically means it has all nine essential amino acids now what does that translate to well unfortunately the human body does not have the ability to manufacture significant amounts of the nine essential amino acids so what that simply means is that they must come from food right so the best source of food is going to be a whole grain such as kaniwa also it's rich in antioxidants which basically helps to lower our risk of heart disease also it's mighty with minerals right lots of calcium lots of zinc and some iron and last but not least it's more nutritious than quinoa remember they're cousins but not the same 
So quinoa has more protein, more antioxidants, and more iron. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to be healthy, it's easy. Put the good stuff in, take out the bad stuff. All right. Now it's time to talk about food. Love it, right? <laughs> okay, now for those of you who've been following Coach D for a while, you already know that my go-to website for everything vegan is ForksOverKnives.com. But sometimes I like to switch it up, right? So say hello to Care2.com. Went to the website, found two amazing vegan Kaniwa recipes that I want to share with you right now. So the first one is Kaniwa and Coconut Pancakes. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but Coach D loves pancakes. So if I can get pancakes made with a super whole grain, right, <laughs> I'm going to try it. And then we have the second recipe, which is Kaniwa Winter Salad. Take a look at that picture. It looks amazing, right? Now, here's the thing. If you are interested in the pancakes and or the salad, Coach D is providing you a direct link to these recipes. All you have to do is click on the description box, click on the link, read the information, make it, and please let me know how it tastes. All right, now 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you are saying, well, Coach D, thanks for the nutrition facts, thanks for the fun facts, and thanks for the background information. But what I really want to know is, when should I eat more Kaniwa? Well, for those of us who are wondering, the perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day, is Nature Day. What? Nature Day. That's right. Guys, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, maybe you've never heard of Nature Day. Maybe you don't know anything about the 23% challenge. Well, allow me to inform you. The 23% challenge is basically a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to save planet Earth. Now, here's the really interesting thing about the challenge is that it's only seven days. That's right, guys, seven days. As a matter of fact, it's the first seven days of each and every month, right? So being that it's the first seven days of every month, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every single month. So whether it's October 1st, September 1st, or even April 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right. Now, some of you are probably very interested in learning more about Nature Day. If you are, here you go. Nature Day is all about getting closer to nature. Now, yes, there are lots of things that you can do to get closer to nature. You can go swim in a lake. You can go pet your pet. You can go take your dog for a walk in a park, right? But for today's lecture, Coach D wants to recommend that we all get a little closer to nature through our diet. That's right, guys. It's time to start eating more plants. It's very simple. Now, for those of us who are considering adopting or shall we say transitioning to a more plant based diet, Coach D wants to offer three very quick avenues that can help facilitate that. <clears throat> the first one is to try to become a 3% vegan. Now, 3% vegan is anyone who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 13% vegan. Now, a 13% vegan is anyone, man or woman, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water four days out of an entire month. And lastly, we have a 23% vegan, which is what Coach D is. Now that's someone who only eats plant foods and drinks only water seven days out of an entire month. Now for Coach D, I always do it the first seven days, not the second, not the third, not the fourth. It's always the first seven days of every single week. Now, some of you may be wondering, all right, Coach D, 
I get it. 1% means, I'm sorry, 3% means one day, 13% means four days, 23% means seven days, right? But when you talk about plant foods, what exactly do you mean? Well, if you're going to try this, then you definitely want to stick to the five food groups of plant foods. And they are fruits, vegetables and herbs, legumes, meaning beans and peas, whole grains, and we can't forget about, um, uh-oh, I just forgot it. <laughs> okay, let me go through that once again, and I definitely apologize. Fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, oh, and nuts and seeds. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, guys. A quick way to transition to a more plant-based whole food diet. All right, now some of you are probably really, really interested in <clears throat> transitioning, right? And you probably wanna have a really good, successful nature day. So here are four tips to help you out. Number one, go visit your local grocery store. But here's the thing, when you get to the grocery store, only, and I repeat, only shop in the produce section. Why the produce section? Well, because that's where you're going to find all of your plant foods. Next up, go visit a local farmer's market. Now, there are some advantages to shopping at a farmer's market versus a local grocery store. Farmer's market is going to provide produce that is grown locally, right? So guess what? Less transportation time, which basically helps to reduce the cost. Also, this produce is going to have fewer pesticides and fewer herbicides. Tip number three, go visit the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. Now, here's how you do it. You just simply walk on over to the prepared dishes section or some grocery stores may term it the kitchen. When you talk to the person behind the desk, all you have to do is ask them if they have any vegan or vegetarian options. If they do, ask for a quick taste test, right? <clears throat> a quick sample. Now, providing you like it, all you have to do is just, is just purchase it by the pound or maybe even two pounds. Lastly, go visit a vegan restaurant. Now, some of us may not even know that vegan restaurants exist. Well, they actually do. And to locate one, all you have to do is go to Google, type in vegan restaurants near me, and within less than half of a second, Google will give you all of the best results. Now, here's the thing. Vegan restaurants are amazing. Why? Because they employ vegan chefs. Now, vegan chefs know exactly how to cook plant foods to get the most nutrients and the best flavors. And they also know how to combine different plant foods to get the most nutrients and the best flavors. So if you decide to go to a vegan restaurant, do two things. Number one, let them know that Coach D sent you. And number two, be sure to order something with Kaniwa in it. Question of the day comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation. Why? Because we have inquiry minds. So we want to know which Kaniwa recipe do you prefer? Is it the first one, the second one, or maybe, just maybe, you know of a vegan Kaniwa dish that you would like to share with us? So whether you want to take one of mine or share one of yours, please write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please subscribe and like the video. Also, don't forget to use our three word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated before, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. But always remember to take care, God bless, and never ever forget that Coach D loves you.